There are two types of leaders in this world. The first one is what I call an impact leader. Now, an impact leader is someone who leaves your life better off than before they came along. And lucky for me, that was the first leader I had ever worked for. I was 23 years old working as a waitress in a restaurant. And I gotta tell you, I was a pretty good waitress and I loved my job. However, I did not want to be a professional waitress for the rest of my life. I actually wanted to be a professional singer. And my boss knew this about me. And he often took opportunities to help push me toward that dream. And I'll never forget the first time he grabs a stool, places it in the middle of the restaurant, hands me a microphone, and he says, Betsy, here's your chance to prove that you really want to be a singer. Get up on that stool and sing for our customers. And I looked at him and I said, it's not really a sing in front of your customers type of restaurant. And then I remember my dad's voice in the back of my head that says, you know, if you don't give 100% to your dreams when it doesn't matter, you're not going to give 100% when it does. So I got up on that stool and I sang my heart out. And I got my very first standing ovation. It was a great moment for me. And I'll tell you, it prepared me for auditioning in front of other people. And I went on to have a 12-year career traveling the world as a professional singer. Now, let me ask you something. Was it my boss's responsibility to let me sing at the restaurant? Absolutely not. But as an impact leader, he understood that the more he invested in my dreams outside the workplace, that the more he would get from me within the workplace. That's the power of being an impact leader. Now on the other side of the spectrum, we have what I call the paycheck leader. And paycheck leaders will never do anything more than their paycheck requires them to do. And unfortunately, paycheck leaders only ever produce paycheck employees. So we start to see low morale, low trust, and a low productive work environment. And because no one wants to stay working for that type of leader, we see higher turnover rates as well. Because let's face it, no one leaves bad companies, they leave bad leaders. So now we're forced to get out and get new leaders to replace them, which costs us even more money in our organizations. And the sad news is that paycheck leaders have become the standard in today's workforce, and it's starting to hurt our organizations. And Fast Company Magazine came out with an article about a company that overshot a change they wanted to implement by 89 weeks. 39 of those weeks were due to mistrust in leadership. And according to Forbes, 85% of organizations feel that their current leaders are not strong enough to fill vital leadership roles within their company. And 63% of people who move up into those leadership roles feel that their leadership development programs are not actually equipping them to be able to build high-performing teams. Well, we all know if you're not building a high-performing team, you can't have a high-performing company. So things have got to change for us. And when I share, share these statistics with organizations, what I hear them ask is, what do we need to bring into our organization or our leadership development programs or take out to help our leaders? And that's a great question. However, there's a better question we need to ask to start. And that question is, how do we measure the level of leadership within each of our leaders? And from there, how do we develop a strategic plan to raise everybody up to become that impact leader? Now, we've learned to measure certain things like our IQ and our EQ, correct? So our IQ stands for, who knows? Go ahead and shout it out. Intelligence, Intelligence quotient, absolutely. And our EQ stands for, somebody shout that out. Our emotional quotient, we measure the levels of emotional intelligence we have. Today, I want to introduce you to the three quotients that measure your credibility, respect, and effectiveness as a leader in any organization. So let's start with the first one, which is your skills quotient. And I think the best way to start this is with a quote by Abraham Lincoln. As he once said, if you give me six hours to chop down a tree, I'll spend the first four sharpening the ax. Right? As a former woodcutter, he understood the sharper your ax is, the more effective you'll be at your job. Well, it works the same with leadership skills. The more we sharpen our skills, the more effective we'll be within our organization. Now, I've been able to interview top leaders from around the nation, and what I found is that they have 23 skills that help make them a top leader, such as effective communication skills, being able to handle conflict resolution and helping other people be able to do the same, 
being able to understand human behavior and people skills, communicating, connecting, and influencing people who are not like you. But the most interesting skill that I found they had in common, and the one that is left out of most leadership trainings, is coaching skills. The ability to see someone's potential, bring it out of them, and have them work in their strength zone so that they can move up within the company. But in order to do that, you have to see something special in them that they don't even see within themselves. I call it our special sauce. And think about your mother's favorite recipe that she makes that has that special sauce that she won't share with anybody. Well, what's the special sauce inside each of those employees that works for you? Well, there's a way to look for it. You just have to simply see something unique in them, like I said, that they don't see in themselves. So I'm going to show you a set of logos as an example that you've probably seen a hundred times. However, you may have missed the special sauce in each of them. So for instance, raise your hand when you see the arrow in the FedEx logo. I see quite a few hands going up, okay? And if you haven't seen it, look for the white space between the E and the X. See it now? All right, how about the person riding the bicycle and the little Tour de France logo? Anyone see that one? Take some time. And the last one's a little bit easier. Amazon wants you to know they deliver everything from A to Z with a smile. How come we've never noticed some of these before? Simply because we're not looking. You're either coaching people to success or you're bossing them to failure. The choice is yours. Now, the second quotient helps give you more productivity in the workplace, and that is our habit quotient. These are the things we do on a daily basis that make us more effective as a leader. And when interviewing those top leaders around the nation, we discovered 10 success habits that they all share. Now, the interesting thing is when we go into organizations to teach this to leaders, we don't just share these 10 success habits because we understand that, yes, we have habits we want to make, but we also have habits that we need to break. So we need to address both of these at the same time. So for instance, someone may have the habit of procrastinating. So we need to help break that habit and make the habit of prioritizing and managing your time better. Some people have the habit of judging others who have a different perception from them. And that causes more conflict in the workplace. So we need to help make the habit of understanding the different personality styles in the workplace and how to communicate better with each one. Your habits are what make you more effective within your organization. Now the last, the last quotient, and the most important one of all, is the one that gets you respect and it gets you influence as a leader. And that is your character quotient. You know, great leaders understand that your skills, your habits, your position or title is not what makes you a great leader. Your character does. And in order to be an influential leader, you have to be the type of leader that people feel is worth following. And I think a great example of this is Herb Kalleller, who was a former CEO of Southwest Airlines. You know, his employees raved about how he would remember every single one of their names. How he would go out on the busiest travel day of the year on Thanksgiving and help them load luggage. And how he created a work environment that was so much fun, people actually enjoyed going to work. And in 1994, on Boss's Day, 16,000 of his employees bought an ad in the USA Today to thank him for not only being an incredible boss, but also a friend. In closing today, I want to challenge you to rethink what leadership means in today's workforce. You know, I believe that leadership is not a position or title, but it's a responsibility and one we should not take lightly. So I'm asking you to join with me in helping raise the level of leadership for our future generation and work on your skills, your character, and your habits so that you can make an impact where it matters most. Thank you very much.